Hello! In today's video, I wanted to talk about some of my favorite hikes that are near Bozeman and the ones that I think are the most worthwhile doing if you're in here for a short bit of time or ones that you should prioritize if you're here for a longer bit of time, whatever. I think they're the best ones around Bozeman. And I kind of have, I have a whole host of notes right here, and I kind of wrote them down in the order of um, like how hard they are, in my opinion. And I'm going to do my best to find some like old fi old photos um, from each hike that I've done because I've done all of these at least once. So if I don't have any pictures, I'm very sorry. I will link um, all of the all trails links for each of these hikes in the description box. And there you can find descriptions of how hard the hike is, the elevation gain profile, um, reviews of what people are saying about like the road to get to the hike, um, the bugs, the weather, all of that stuff, as well as usually quite a few pictures. So I guess the first hikes that I wanna talk about are like kind of a two in one. They're at different trailheads, but they're both in highlight uh, recreation area just south of Bozeman. And the first one is Palisade Falls. And this is one that is like one of the go-tos, like your parents or even your grandparents are in town visiting you in college and you're like, I'm gonna show you Bozeman. And so you go and you do Palisade Falls and it's 1.1 miles round trip. It is quite steep, but the whole thing is um, paved with asphalt up until the very end. And there's this beautiful waterfall. It's, the rock formations there are super cool. I've never been in the winter, but I've heard it's beautiful when it freezes in the winter. Some people do like ice climbing and stuff there. So that's an awesome one. And then the second one is Grotto Falls and that one's 2.4 miles round trip. Also um, a very wide path and it's not paved but there's gravel on it the whole way so it's another awesome one you can like push a stroller on it really easily that's um once again you can go in the summer and kind of like jump in the waterfall and jump into the pool right there or in the winter it is absolutely gorgeous to see all the frozen waterfall and everything so those are the two that i consider the like go to your parents or grandparents are in town they're very they're very very close to each other and you can knock them both out in about an hour and a half And then the next one that I wanted to mention was Kirk Hill. And so Kirk Hill is kind of on your way to highlight also south of Bozeman. And it's in a hill, so it's quite steep and hilly, but this is beautiful around the autumn time. There's a lot of like foliage that actually changes color within that uh, trail because a lot of places around here just have um, coniferous trees so they don't change colors. However, at Kirk Hill, there's so many beautiful leaves and stuff. And that is about a 1.6 mile round trip. There's a lot of like small interconnected trails in there. You can kind of choose if you want to turn left or right or all that, but you have these beautiful foil foliage and then you get like a pretty good view of Gallatin Valley from the top. The next one, um, and this is becoming, these are gonna get a little bit longer and a lot more popular and busy. So all of these are quite popular and busy trails. So if you go on a weekend, probably start early. If you can do it on a weekday, that's ideal. The next one I wanted to mention is Storm Castle. And this is five point, oh, sorry. This is 4.7 miles round trip. And you get awesome views of Gallatin Can Canyon um, at the top. There's just this like big outcropping of rocks. You can see Gallatin River like below you and then the canyon going north and south. It's very beautiful. Um, it's also, it's, a little bit hard but it's not too too hard if you want like a quicker hike but still a good workout that's awesome storm castle is perfect for that it is pretty exposed so it gets quite hot and it can be quite crowded uh, my next one is lava lake which is the first hike that i did in montana the first place i went backpacking in montana and it is a 5.5 mile round trip round trip but it is quite steep and quite difficult in parts and sections. Like I'm a decently in shape person and I go hiking a lot and I'm always winded on this trail. Um, but you get up to this beautiful lake, it's perfect for like a one night backpacking trip. But my, and it is quite crowded. The only bear that I've seen on a trail in Montana, I did see on Lava Lake. It was a black bear, but it was not an issue. Um, and I will never hike Lava Lake again without going up a little bit of the way to Table Mountain which is one of the mountains that kind of surrounds the lake in the little bowl that it's in. So right before you get to the lake, when you're hiking up the trail, there's another trail that kind of goes up to the left towards Table Mountain and everything. And it connects to these 
other trails that are like quite far away so you can do quite a long loop if you wanted to but it is beautiful up there you get so many more views of like peaks and mountains and you can look back towards bozeman and see the bridger range and you have a great view of the lake and everything it's it's absolutely gorgeous and when i did that little extra section i saw no one on the trail like literally no one else was on that trail and it was so beautiful Um, and Lava Lake and Storm Castle are both on your way down towards Big Sky, uh, so you're moving south on Highway 191. And another one down towards Big Sky is Beehive Basin. And this one is 7.1 miles. And it is, oh, again, so, so it's 7.1 miles, so it's a bit longer. Um, it is very, very beautiful though. And they, there's always such beautiful wildflowers up there and the, the Basin Lake area is, it's, a little bit small but the water is so serene and it almost looks like if you stand at the one end of it and look towards the gap rather than towards the basin itself you can it looks like an infinity pool almost because the water just is so calm and reflects the sky beautifully um i actually got one of the pictures that i took there put into big sky magazine my sophomore year of college i was the like opening shot for big sky magazine which was really cool um, it's a quite busy trailhead and there's not a whole lot of parking there. So definitely start early if you're going to do that one on a weekend. It is a must. Um, again, it's a quite exposed trail so it can get quite sunny and hot just as a heads up. And if you're into backcountry skiing, that's an awesome area that a lot of people go backcountry skiing in the winter or um, in the spring when the snow hasn't quite melted out. The first time I tried to hike Beehive Basin was in... The beginning of June and we didn't make it to the top we were post holing through it up to our waist we were like maybe a th um, like a third of a mile or a half mile away from the actual basin but we couldn't or the lake but we couldn't see anything because it was all under snow um, so that's definitely a little bit of a later summer hike but also perfect if you're wanting to do some backcountry skiing And then moving back towards the Bozeman area itself in the Bridger Range, there is Sacagawea and Hardscrabble Peaks. And Sacagawea is the highest peak in the Bridger Range. And if you want to hike to the peak itself from the trailhead, it's a 4.5 mile hike. And then Hardscrabble Peak is the one that forms like the saddle. So you have two peaks and then a saddle in between. And so Sacagawea is the taller one and then Hardscrabble is just a little bit shorter. Um, and that's another one that you can do. You could do both in one day if you really wanted to. They're awesome hikes. They're quick, but there's a little bit of a hard section at the end, just like right when you're summiting the peak, it's just kind of straight up and you get a little bit winded, but they're short. There's always a bunch of people up there, but if you get up there early enough, you will most likely see goats, mountain goats. Um, the most recent time or the second most recent time I was up there, I saw two mountain goats and one little baby kid. It was so cute. Um, and it's usually really, really windy up there. So just a heads up on that one. But you get awesome views. You get 360 degree views of the entire Gallatin um, like Valley area. So you can see all the way west to the tobacco routes. You can look south to the Gallatin mountain range and you can look east to the crazies. And then southeast, you can see the, um, a little bit of the, um, the Absorkies and everything. So you just have beautiful views around the whole way because you're on the tallest peak in the range. Um, so it's really awesome because it's really quick and yet you get that big payoff with the views. The lake at the trailhead is also absolutely beautiful. It's called Fairy Lake. It has this beautiful blue-green hue to it. It can get a little bit buggy, but there's also a lot of wildflowers around the lake usually. Um, the biggest drawback about this hike is the seven mile dirt road to get to it is notoriously bad. So last summer they bladed the trail and, or the road and so it's a lot better than it used to be. Um, the first time I drove it my freshman year I got a nail in my tire and then um, I've heard of break, uh, like jeeps and other cars like breaking axles on the road from driving too quickly. So if you take it slow and you just like know what you're doing on a dirt road you'll be fine in the winter and when it's kind of muddy and icy it can get quite dangerous there's been some recent deaths on the road so just like be aware of that um that's another one that if you look on all trails people will kind of like 
be updating pretty frequently on how the road conditions are, but it is notoriously bad. But it is totally, totally doable and it's so worth it, honestly. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Emerald Lake. And this is, so there's Emerald Lake everywhere. Uh, there's one in Colorado, there's one in California. There, there's so, it's so hard to track down the correct Emerald Lake that you're talking about. But this one is in the highlights or in the highlight like recreation area just south of town. And it's an 8.9 mile round trip hike. I didn't remember it being this long until I looked it up and saw that. So I don't think it's that hard of a hike. It's definitely like a, a longer day because it's long. Um, but you can get up to Emerald Lake and then there's a, another lake just a little bit behind it that very few people go to. I do remember it being quite buggy when I did it. I did it on the 4th of July. Um, and I also saw quite a few mountain bikers. So a lot of the trails out here all are multi-purpose. There can be like horses and hikers and uh, mountain bikers and stuff. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. But that is the one where I kind of came across the most mountain bikers. So that's just something to kind of think about. The next hike that I wanted to talk about was uh, Blackmore Peak, and this is also in Highlight Recreation Area, and this is one of the closer hikes actually within Highlight, and it is 10.8 miles long, and again, I, I guess I remember it being that long. I don't remember it being too, too difficult. It is rated as hard on all trails, but I think that's just because of the length. There are a couple of steep spots, but otherwise it's like a pretty doable hike, honestly. Um, it is very, very beautiful too. So you start off and you go past a Blackmore Lake pretty quickly on. It's a bit swampy though, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend like backpacking near the lake, but I know some people do. Um, and then you just carry on up towards the peak. And when you're on the peak of Blackmore, you have really pretty views of highlight as well as, um, I think I remember that you can see the Bridgers from the top, as well as you can kind of look south and see more of the Gallatin Range, like down towards Big Sky. So it's very pretty because you don't, there's not that many hikes like really, really close to Bozeman with that kind of view. Um, and it is nice and long. So if you're looking for a longer hike, that's a good one. And it has very pretty views. Um, I do want to say that there were a lot of flies at the top and a lot of the peaks around here do tend to have a lot of flies and bugs at the top. So it can be kind of bothersome because you can't really chill out on top of the peak as long as you really want to after working so hard to get there but it's not too, too difficult and they're not like gonna bite you too much either. They're just kind of a nuisance. Um, additionally, Blackmore Peak area is another popular spot for backcountry skiing. So like in the dead of winter, you can go out there and do it or in the beginning springtime type area where um, like the ski resorts are closed, but you can still do some backcountry skiing. That's a really popular thing to do. So that was a really fun one. Uh, the next one I want to talk about and the last one in the highlight area that I'm going to mention is Highlight Peak. And I actually just did this yesterday and it was really, really fun. I had been wanting to do it for the entire time I've been in Bozeman, so like four years, and I finally got around to it with a couple of friends yesterday. And it is 16 miles long according to all trails if you want to go to the peak. And I think it's about 13, 12 miles long if you just go to the lake and you don't do the peak. Um, it's it's really long, but honestly, it's really, really easy until you get to the lake and you want to do that final push to the summit. And from the lake to the summit, it took us about, I think it was 45 minutes to an hour. So like a third of our hiking was just that area up to the peak because it's quite steep. Um, mostly because there was a big snowbank that blocked one of the switchback so you kind of just had to go straight up instead of taking the switchback around but it was really really gorgeous up there uh you have 360 degree views of highlight you have the entire highlight region and then you can see lone peak of big sky from the top of highlight you can look over to the east and see paradise valley south of livingston you have all a view of all of the gallatins you can see the bridger range it's it's truly truly beautiful up there and everyone says it's the best views in highlight and around Bozeman and I have to agree it's very very high up there it is truly beautiful um and like I said it's honestly probably the easiest 16 mile hike I've ever done because the trail is super easy until you get to the lake and want to go up 
it's a great place to go backpacking for that reason because you can take all of your heavy gear to the lake and then ditch it all and summit the peak if you want and then just like hang out at the lake for a night or whatever uh, we did see a couple mountain bikers and that trail during certain parts of the year is accessible to like dirt bikers as well so like motorized dirt bikes and we saw about four of them um, but it wasn't too bad and we did it on a sunday so it was a pretty busy day and it still didn't feel that busy of a trail and the trailhead is in the same area as grotto falls so if you wanted to you could just like do a quick detour and hit grotto falls as well Then I have two more, and this one is out towards Livingston. So this is, I guess it's about the same amount of drive as it is to the ones down by Big Sky. And this is Pine Creek Lake. And this one is 9.2 miles round trip. And boy, is it steep. Oh my gosh. I remember this being so, so, so steep. Um, but it's so beautiful. The When I did it, we went backpacking for one night, and it was it was awesome. But there's... The trail, and I think maybe about a mile in, you see some small waterfalls and they're really, really pretty. But once you're getting farther into the hike, maybe about four miles in, there's this really tall, beautiful, beautiful waterfall down to this like lakey pond thing. And then you can keep hiking up to the actual lake up above. Um, it's a really beautiful area. There's the bowl is just like all these beautiful rocky mountains and you're walking through this kind of burn area that has all this beautiful new growth and everything. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. It's definitely one of my favorite ones that I've done. It is hard. Um, and I remember when I, when I did it, I had all of my stuff for overnight backpacking. So I had a water filter on me and we had to stop at one of the like turnarounds really, or turn areas really close to the creek so that we could pump some more, like filter some more water to fill up our water bottles. And there were quite a few people who were hiking that asked me to fill up their water bottles because they had run out of water. So just keep in mind that you need to take a lot of water. You're pretty exposed for a lot of the hike because you're walking through a burn area, but it is, it's absolutely gorgeous. And when, any, when anyone is asking for a, a hike that is on the more difficult side or they're a more advanced hiker and are looking for one single hike to do in Bozeman or around Bozeman, that's the one I recommend. So it is south of Livingston, so it's a little bit longer of a drive, but honestly, it's not that much longer than if you were to drive as far into Highlight as you could or down towards Big Sky. So I still count it as a Bozeman area hike. And the last one that I'm gonna talk about is for our serious hikers and runners, and that is the Bridger Range Ridge. So a lot of people that do the Bridger Range Ridge start at the Fairy Lake Trailhead where you summit Sacagawea Peak, like uh, I had mentioned earlier in the video. And then you follow the entire Bridger Ridge line all the way south to the M, where there's like a stone M on the side of the mountain for the school, MSU. And the funny thing about the ridge is there's so many different distances that people report so it could be anywhere from like 18 to 22 miles because everyone's like navigation and gps reports different recordings and all of that um and i got lost on the trail when i did it a little bit so we added a little bit of distance there but it's a it's a fun hike if you like to hit a lot of peaks at once when we did it it took us 13 hours so it's no joke you gotta be prepared you gotta want to do it and keep a good pace we recently tried to do it again on 4th of July weekend and we got caught in some storms and so we had to bail off at Bridger Bowl. So that's something to keep in mind. But if you're into like trail running or something, it's a very popular trail run um, and you can get it done a lot quicker obviously. There's usually a um, like a race that people do, it's the Bridger Ridge Run race and that got cancelled this year because of COVID but that's another popular thing. It's definitely one of those like Bozeman bucket list items that people usually always talk about, but honestly not that many people have done it. And I definitely think it's worth it. When I first did it, I said I'd never ever do it again. And then I tried it again this summer. Didn't finish it obviously, but it's a really good one if you have a full day and you kind of got to get started on the trail by like six in the morning, which means you got to leave town by about five in the morning. But if you're really into hiking and you want to do something big and are into through hiking, that's definitely one that I recommend. So 
So there's so many hikes around Bozeman and I know I did not come anywhere near talking about all of them, but these are the ones that I have done that I really enjoy and I do recommend to people. There are some that I have done that I did not include on this list because I don't, I mean, they're nice if you just want to like knock out a hike or something like that. And there are a couple that I still have on my list that I want to do, um, specifically Crazy Peak in the Crazy Mountains and the Sphinx in the Gallatins, um, as well as some other ones that we've had to be like turned around on. But I just thought I'd make this video and kind of talk about my favorite hikes around Bozeman. And like I said, I will link all of the All Trails links down below so you can kind of find more information on the um, trails themselves and hopefully I was able to get some good like pictures in along with my rambling so that you can kind of see what you'd be getting on these hikes. Um, and with that I think I'm gonna wrap up this video and so I thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!